Greetings. Sabbath greetings. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You may not have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, but He is Lord. And if given the opportunity, He would save you. That's probably the reason why I'm here to preach. It's what I'm compelled to do in preaching the Gospel, to speak the truth of God's Word. That there is a Maker and a Creator. That we were once in relationship with Him we fell because of sin, going against his will and his way, that the entire gamut of history, everything that's happened since the, that point, has been in a process of his plan, of his authorship. By rights we should be just destroyed, dead, defunct, gone. And through his mercy, through his grace, his compassion, compassion, his unfathomable love, he has set in motion uh, a, a thing, a work, uh, to redeem mankind. He's opened a way through his son, Jesus Christ, through the, through the death of his son, who is at once him and has been resurrected as him. way that we may be saved. Me, you, Indonesia, Bali, France, Norway, America, every country of the 200x amount of countries on the earth, every person of the 7.2 billion. God's yearning, his desire is that we all come home. Revelation is such a life changing acceptance to know and understand it. That quite honestly, it can completely change your life. Two weeks ago, just before the new year, I preached about the prophecy of Jonah, the words of Jonah, speaking about the, the things that are like to come in the nations and countries that stand proud against the things of God. He has set himself to redeem mankind. He has shed his own blood that he may pay the price, the ransom for our sin, past, present and future. And yet, this day and age there are many people who would go against that teaching. Who will choose to live their own way, their own path. Even though what God offers in that acceptance of who he is and what he's done is the eternal life, is that fullness of relationship, is the opportunity to enter into the kingdom of heaven in a new body, in a, with a new heart, with a clean slate, to live forever with a crown and a gown, a place that's been prepared to worship with the saints forever in a world that is, as we spoke about last week, you know, above and beyond our ability to imagine better than the one we live in now. On the surface it sounds like a no-brainer. It's because it is a no-brainer. What rational mind would reject the things of God in favour of temporary satisfaction in this life when eternity is so long and so much more than what's on offer here. The Bible says that preaching the cross is, is, is a stumbling block to Jews, to the Jewish people, the people who, who uh, were favoured by God and who were offered that opportunity first to be the only people in all of the world that would be saved, be only be God's people. Time, they continually raised up and, uh, other gods and gave themselves over to forgetting, they even forgot God's name. And when he came again, when he fulfilled his scriptures in 
the Old Testament, the arrival of the Son, Jesus Christ, they rejected him wholesale. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. You see, the message of the Gospel, in its simplest form, comes down to a choice. Because that's what we're given. And our decision is to choose right or wrong. Life or death. Light or darkness. The Bible says that the are some people who, whose uh, lives are dark. They conceal and shut that up and cover it over. And in this day and age, that's quite easy to understand. You don't see or hear or experience people worshipping God in the fullness of the joy, the, the certain knowledge that Christ gives us. You find more and more bad tempered people like myself who are giving up on their faith because, well, where's the evidence of the contrary? Science has made an explanation about all, how all this forms. The basalt, the tube that sat on, comes from the, the proto-volcano, the old volcano that was here, in the progression of volcanoes that, that march eastward to the newest one, Rangitoto, which are preached out in the back of all last uh, two weeks ago. Our understanding and our, our knowledge is partial, as we spoke about two weeks ago. If we read 1 Corinthians 13, now we know in part. We see as in uh, a smoky mirror, as in a smoky glass, just a reflection facsimile of what's to come. And how the law was exactly that, it speaks of that. It's truth. And how, I'm just watching this dog go. And how, when God comes, we'll know. When God is visible to all people, as it was a flame of uh, a fire by night and a, and a stack of clouds of clouds by the by the day for the Israelites. We know that God is real when He's evident and manifest. Whether it be you know turning the mountains into wax, melting them down, a furious rebuke of His anger, the fullness of His wrath that we so rightly deserve. Whether as the, as the glorious returning sun on a white horse ahead of the hosts of heaven, rampant in victory as the dead raise first and those that are left living and believing rise up to meet him in the cloud, we'll know that God exists. And the Bible says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, every tongue. God knows where all the people of the world are, and he says in his word, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He's talking about everyone, not a specific group of people. Everyone will know it. You see, in giving us a free choice, what God wants us to do and what God will honour is if we choose him before we see him. This is what faith is. liken it a little bit to when you're younger and you first go go for a swim and you get used to playing and splashing in water. There's a time where you learn to float. And if you can do, do it, go and do it now. If you can go and do it this week, go and do it, I recommend, in the new week to come. Float. Float on your back. Faith is a bit like that. There has to be a point where I lift my feet and give myself over to something new, something that doesn't make sense to me. The water will buoy me up. Everything about my, my knowledge up to that point is that I stand upright upon the earth. I don't float or lift. The only thing that will support me is something denser than myself, such as rock or sand or whatever. 
sofa. And faith in God is, is putting our trust in something that we cannot see. Something that, that, that marks our God, the Creator God, the Maker the heavens and the earth, that he's not vain. He doesn't, he's not interested in images of himself, in pictures of himself, of people bowing down to the reverence of them. This is what marks the other powers and pontins. They have, they have a, a desire to be on display. I mean, some of them I don't think they do. When I look at the gold encrusted statues of the Sufi in India, and the, and the uh, regalia around them, the flowers, I, I, I almost feel empathy with that person if I could meet them and speak with them in that day, they'd be going, that's not what I meant. Don't bow down and make statues of me, don't worship me. I lived a simple and humble life of insight and wisdom and I wanted to share that. I don't have people commit their lives to doing everything other than doing the same. had a sense of God. They didn't know God or they rejected God. They would have heard the gospel of Jesus. And no, it was not that. We're going to assume that. I'm not going to make a decision about that. I'm going to leave it. And this is where, sadly, on that day, when the dead rise, there will be those people who look upon God and realise that's who he was. That's who he is. How we, who he always will be, the maker, the creator, the alpha and mega, the author of salvation, the starter and finisher of work, the living word, the God whose grace is sufficient, the one all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing deity who is able, more than able, to save us from ourselves. Today, as we open your word and talk of your things, I pray for a, an anointing and an appointing. I pray for your Holy Spirit to lift me and guide me and keep me, and make your face shine upon me that I can, in some way, encourage others in the way that you've encouraged me. You have redeemed me, you have saved me, you have lifted me from the miry clay. And although the world still pulls and pulls and pulls at me, Lord, it's you who's important in my life. It's you who's the truth in my life. It's you who I give testimony to. And I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, that in some way I can relate that to me. Amen. I'm on the old batteries from uh, two weeks ago. I've got the place with us. So I'm praying when the, also that when the red light goes off, I can see it because I can barely see it now. It's a good thing. It's a great thing to know the Lord. It's a, better than all the other things I've experienced. I've lived a beach life and Mediterranean life and travelled. I've done amazing things. I've worked for some of the biggest companies on the earth. I've, I've you know, I've had expense accounts and fast cars and provision globally. I've had relationships, I've had all manner of things that the world counts as fruitful. I've taken drugs, I've gone to parties, I've mixed it with the high level party people and the dark denizens of the Underworld, one of the better thing, gangsters and villains and drug dealers and murderers and thieves. And what I can tell you in all of that, and this time's been of riotous laughter and excitement, nothing compares to the gospel. Nothing compares to a war with my Saviour. Nothing, 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 nothing describes me in the possible avenues to go on from the places that I've been 
become a millionaire, have a have, have a forty million dollar yacht, have a life doing it. all of the things. Go to Ibiza. All of the things. Nothing even sounds like it compared to the life that I lead in Christ. Nothing. Just to know Him for a moment, just to know Him for an instant supersedes every other feeling that I've ever had. Physical, mental, spiritual. Whether you're looking into the uh, uh, peace of the Buddhist, if you're looking into the, the, the prosperity of the Hindus, if you're looking into magic and the occult, if you're looking into spiritism, if you're looking into guides, powers, potentates, tarot readings, all of these things. They pale into significance of a walk with Christ, with a walk with our Savior. That's who He is. He's the God of the heavens and the earth. He made all things. He knows every grain of sand on this beach. He's counted in His hand. He knows you and me intimately. He was there when we were formed in the womb. By Him we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he is willing to guide us and teach us and show us and equip us, reveal to us the things of heaven, the things of the greater and deeper truths, the things that explain the things that go on in the world. Now, I may have questions, many questions, but I know that the Lord is patient. And I know that the Lord is good. And I know that the Lord yearns and desires for me to be in that relationship with Him. And as Jesus said, which of you would, if you were a father, which of you would give your child a lump of rock if he asked for a piece of bread? Or a snake if he asked for a piece of fish? And how God, who so much loves us, desires to be in that, will He not furnish us with all the things that He promises? in a place and a way that so supersedes all of our expectation. The journey in this life may be painful, it may be brief. But for that stretch of eternity, for that place in His hand, His home, His family, seem like a small price, a small price to have paid, to be free of the things of this world, the burdens that I used to carry. Yes, I still have pain, I still worry, I still have anxiety, I still have hard lessons this week about lust, about carrying things that are not of God, and, and looking at them and knowing that I'm carrying them and realising and understanding and prayerfully accepting. I've got to set them aside. He will strip you bare if you don't go to him naked. If you pull yourself the things on after you've been so far as I've given him his life, I just want this bit back, this bit back, he will strip you bare again. He wants and yearns to be in relationship with us. He wants and yearns to work through us, to work through His Holy Spirit, to, to do the things of the Kingdom. He wants to turn that bad temper, that person that I was, begin at the end of 2020, in the Gregorian calendar, into something better for 2021. Wonderful. He could smush me in a moment for the things that I've done. And yet he has caused and set himself to continue faithfully and patiently. And I pray and I'll tell you and I'll give testimony. And it's my belief that he will do the same for you. That he will do the same for you if you ask him, if you start on that journey.
home and continue. I'm not going to set down a bad-tempered child. I'm not going to set down the things that I want. The carnal thing, the idols, the things I'm addicted to, I'm not going to set those down. I'm mean, I'm proud, I'm arrogant. Myself over to it as I speak to you. This volcano has been dormant for millennia. It's not true of the one over the hill. To see if they believe that our God. Nothing about our sin, our iniquity. It's just, it's fair. And the alternative is so much better. Just receive from him, just accept him, just say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am unable to do this. I am unable to clean that slate. I have lied, I have cheated, I have stolen, I have dishonoured my parents, I have... <coughs> ...followed and chased after idols and addiction. And yet I've heard of a word that you have spoken, a promise that you have given, that you have knocked on the door of my heart, and if I open that door, Hear your voice. But whatever my condition, you will come in and sit with me and sup with me. You'll begin to reveal those things, that truth about me. And when I know that truth, then I can really make a decision whether I'm for you or against you. But for now, just for this time, please, Lord, please come and show me. go through the book of John, go through it chapter by chapter. Before I did that I was not following winds, but following direction and doing different parts and different pieces. But a trial piece, I think for a preacher is to over to the long job to proper exegesis I say proper opening God's word beyond our ability to do it in one sitting I was a, a teacher of design technology at Woodward you know, the knowledge of the Harvey joints and makes most of the crosses problems from One of the hard things that we faced as teachers of design technology was changing children's mindsets from we just do this exercise now and then finish it to here's a piece of work which may be 12 weeks in the working, in the drawing, in the preparation, in the planning, in the designing, in the evaluation, in the bringing together, in the making. You know, you might be filing, some students filing for two or three weeks, eight lessons. some way inculcating enthusiasm that there's a there's an end point that's worth getting to and you hold up your finished item and say done pass it forward for a serious evaluation and how if you follow the procedure and you keep to the work pattern in that longer endeavor can come greater reward a, a certain deeper satisfaction of a job well done of a following the procedure of, of, of you know being able to to complete a task over a longer period of time than just that single sitting and of course in today's age of 
very info technology is, is short, sharp, and sharp. I want to. I want to be satisfied. I want to be satisfied. I want to be satisfied. I don't want to have to think: Is this going to carry on? Is this ever going to end? Christians too. Paul, the apostle, talked about a race that must be run, run by everybody. And that's, he's talking a marathon, not a sprint. I've been blessed in the company of a marathon runner recently. Somebody I'd like to uh, hold in prayer. that tenacity, that, that strength of core self being to see through the greater job. I mean, it inspires me to try and do the same, to shock into my troubles and perils and problems in order to overcome. Recognising a bad temper, boy, is not a good outcome. As a metallurgist, uh, tempering is a, is a heat treatment. The idea is it brings out a, an increased hardness, uh, an increased usefulness. And that's, as a believer, that's what we pray for, a continuing journey of, of, of refining, of gleaning, of cleaning, of, of, of lifting up a master's handiwork. To the glory of God, a broken vessel made whole, worthy of being filled with His Holy Spirit. That's my journey, that's my life. That's my raise and detra. It's my joy, it's my hope. That's what I want for your life. That's what we're encouraged to be as believers, not to be people who sit in chairs and voyeurs who just watch on as other people go and do stuff. We're called to be members of a body, each with a function, from the toes to the testicles, from the head to the fingers, the head being Jesus. He never slumbers and never sleeps, who is preparing a place and has been for 2,000 years without a break. Oh, do we observe? Here's the Sabbath rest. And if he worked in the Sabbaths when he was here, he'll be working in the Sabbaths when he's there. And if he's preparing a place for us, as I believe and as I've stated before, as a belief, as a maxim of the Church of God, it, I believe that he is building the city that will come down in the end days that we will move into and live in the city of gold. I think he's building that by hand. Very few helpers, just those, the ultimate crew, that 24 people. Enoch and the Elijahs were counted as worthy to go up to heaven now. While the rest of us are sleeping, while well, uh, many people are laying in their graves, the souls resting until that day that he comes again. He's put a crew together and they are living that life for 2,000 years. Oh, what excellence that must be! Singing, praising, sharing, building a kingdom fit for a race gives over its life to God. To be an inheritor of that, to be a, a person who can one day open the door in a room in the kingdom of heaven, how that room will be beyond what I can imagine. And that's his promise. That's his promise to you and that's where we're you know, called to do more, not to be justified for other works. We could never afford the rent, we could never put a down payment on it. All we can do is lift our filthy rags to the Lord and say, Here, Lord, filthy rags. But we're encouraged in the Bible to, to you know, 
help the homeless, the sick, the poor, the needy, the hurt, the lost, the afraid, the afflicted, to encourage each other in the church, to, to build rather than destroy, to speak words of passion and encouragement rather than anger and condemnation. To judge is the Lord. And although there are times as believers where we have authority to judge, it should only ever be done in the, you know, the, there's no one else about us. Oh, I can speak words of condemnation. That's the outlay, that's the end point continued disobedience for me too. And there's times in my life I've had to be taken right to the edge of that before I've changed. And I think that's what happens to most of us when we read about Peter and Paul. When we read about Elijah. Moses. We see that God's lesson necessarily so, he has to prune us, he has to teach us and guide us and correct us in the ways that we must go in order that we can receive from him the things that we want, the things that we truly ask for, he knows our heart if I want to know God and I want to be involved in the things of the kingdom then I have to conform to his will not try and conform him to mine the world. Single reading. More to praise it or something or so. Oh. Now we can make a mess of things. But I can tell you this. If you're reading the gospel or singing God's praises and you're struck down, you're in the right place. You're doing the right thing and there's nothing in heaven or earth can change that. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and he carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, yeah. Jesus Messiah, name above all names. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. body the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out, all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so amazing, yeah. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, that means God with us, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our 
hope is in you. All our hope is in you. All the glory to you, God, the light of the world, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Amen. Emmanuel, he can be with you too. Rescue for sinners, just ask him. The ransom from heaven, he's paid the price. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. You're the Lord of all. the victory. Hallelujah. Praises to his name. <laughs> that was me. I'm trying to get to a song here. It's the last song. Praises to his name. And so many people are so, you know, ah, I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to call his name. I don't want to hear his voice. I don't want to speak or know him. Because in some way, he's let me down. He's disappointed me, or more likely, I've disappointed him. You see, we have an enemy, and his name is Satan. He was once a, an angel of light and still masquerades as an angel of light. And he's very good at lying cheating and stealing and thieving and murdering. He's been doing it for a long time. He's a twister of words, a mocker and a shocker. He'll employ any tactic to get you to look this way or that, to take your eyes off Jesus and to give yourself over to the other things, to fight it in your own strength, to stopping relying on God, thinking that you're not good enough or you're not worthy or in some way you're, you're better than that and you can do it another way. God, what a bastard. And I use that word meaning in the fullness of the meaning of Father, the Son, Satan has crossed the line, he's become morally corrupt. And it's a permanent thing, he's hardened his heart, he's stiffened his neck, he's made a choice, which as I said before, there's no choice at all, it's, it's foolishness, idolatry, I, I don't know what you call it, it's just plain wrong, to choose sin, to go against God, to harden your heart, to stiffen your neck, to place yourself in a place where you're beyond reach. Don't fear. It's a message that's spoken, they some say, up to 365 times in the Bible. That's once for every day. Do not be anxious or afraid. But which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit? That's a meat, that's a foot and a half to your height. No, we'll give ourselves over to the grand things of this life and this world and think that they're enough to satisfy us. And yet the truth is, as we know, the diets don't work. The, Glossy magazines are all made up pictures and the truth is we're not happy, we're not satisfied unless we accept Jesus, unless we have that light that we see in the people that are of God. That's how we see, that's how we distinguish one person from another, from another, from another on the beach. We all love the same. carry a light inside us, it shines like that. Beacon. Many people will walk past and only one or two will show any sort of glimmer at it. 
where it really goes, you know, kind of neon spectacular is when we come together as a people of saints. The Bible says in uh, Psalm 34 verse 7 that uh, an angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him and will deliver them. So around me now at least one angel, uh, a power of heaven that assures me of my continued journey and success. When we come together in fellowship, we bring those angels together for more than one. And I'm sure one angel is sufficient to cover a couple of us being close together, so we can send angels out in prayer to do bidding, not as wish fulfilled, but as fulfilling the things that God has told us to do. That's the church. Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, cleansing the lepers, opening the eyes of the blind, making the lame walk, the deaf hear, the mute speak, bringing people back to life. Wow! Opening the eyes of the blind, amazing! And this is what the Bible says. Battery chain. I'm praying that the, uh, <laughs> the moment the video went off, when I did the whip crack with the jacket, well, that would just be kind of showing. Because it's not meant to be like that, you know, it's, it's not for our glory. It's for God's splendor, that's serious business. Healing the sick is about recovering people from loss and failure and giving people strength and hope for the future. Leprosy was the very much the illness of the day, the unexplainable curse it came upon people without warrant or reason and debilitated them, you know, to the point where they couldn't feel, they lost fingers and limbs, debilitated their features. Jesus cleansed the lepers. I wonder how many maladies he cured. Diseases we know today that, that wouldn't have been expressly published or differentiated for because everything really was just a curse from God. You were a result of your sinful life or the sinful life of your parents or grandparents. You were receiving the things that were related to you, I don't know if I spoke about this two weeks ago, but it's certainly been on my mind, it's been something that's been pressed into my understanding recently about the, about the ten lepers, the story of the ten lepers that Jesus told, how only one who came back and he was a Samaritan, a foreigner. But Jesus cleansed the ten lepers, this is his, within his power, it's within his power to cure cancer, to, to make the, the most uh, disfiguring malady completely gone, to regrow limbs. You know, this is this is God we're talking about. There's nothing too difficult for Him. We have to be aligned. We have to be ready and accepting for that to happen and expectant. And we have to be mindful of the time and the audience and the achievement. Because our maladies and illnesses too are things that we can bear. And in that bearing there may be teaching, in that bearing there may be growth, in that bearing there may be, you know, encouragement for others, inspiration. Think of Nick, the Kuji Ditch, the uh, preacher, no limbs, vestigial, a, a, a limb foot. Preaches with such power and passion, inspires many by his message of overcoming. That's hope for our sin and our diseased and our imperiled. Jesus is that hope. And pray for the manifestation of 
the Spirit. Jesus is a church as it grows, the true church will see outpouring of his Holy Spirit. And that outpouring of the Holy Spirit are the things of miracle, provision, overcoming, change. So I, I'm working towards, I'm kind of hopeful, but I have to be correct within me. I've got to help the Lord. I've got to align myself with him. He doesn't need my help. But his yearnings, his desires to work through his people. I've got to develop the prayer life, the confidence. We see in Peter, in the book of Acts, we see him, you know, transformed from the broken man that he was to return to the foot of the cross, to return to Jesus, to return to his master, humbly, in brokenness, and repentance, to turn away from that lack of confidence, that lack of faith, that lack of love, to a commitment that earned the zeal, that earned him a place on the cross, upside down, according to him. Stories. And in that, again, to see the power of the healing soul. Raise the dead. To speak in tongues. To speak to powers and authorities in, the, in a way they acknowledge that amazed them because the Holy Spirit was speaking through them. Back to them flow of the Holy Spirit, he had become an accepted vessel. And when that Spirit moves through us, it's when the things of the Holy Spirit can come back. Yes, the fake, whiplashing of jackets, well up to those. God knows the heart, and knows those who pretend posh people so they make them fall over. Play a game with the things of God in a, in a way, in a pretending way, like the hypnotists. In the same way, when the hypnotists work in crowds, that's what they do. Is that they rely on people to join in the game, to join in the rooms, to realise they're part of it, to show God's truth is honest and open and abundant. He's more than able. Exactly like that, you get to the point where we're just on the edge of that covenant and we're diverted by some distraction, some other master's voice, it prevents us from revealing the truth. Because so you would hear it, that people hear the wave, smile, we want to be part of a successful ministry. Do they want to Christ? Do they want to suffer for Jesus? Do they want to, to go out to the ends of the earth? Do they want to go to India and Indonesia and Pakistan and Mexico? Places that are around, places that are, you know, off the charts. I, I can't do what I'm doing now in the, some of those countries. In Saudi Arabia, it will be, people will come up, the Qatar will come up, and they will say, what are you doing? You're trying to evangelize trying to share the word, when they realise that I'm holding the cross and preaching the gospel, I'll be asked to leave that country, if not in prison, if not tortured. And in the same way in China, and Iran, and in, uh, India, and Pakistan, and all those places, people are speaking and preaching the gospel of God. They are compelled in the same way that I'm compelled to come down here. God honors those that honor him. 
raise a cross, I lift the Bible, I speak the word, I encourage people, I pray for them. And I've made some dreadful mistakes. Yeah, I'm consistently stubborn to the point of stupidity and going back and continuing on. And I don't lie when I say if I don't make it more, I'm still going to do it for you. It's his choice. And I accept his <laughs> decision. It may astound me when I feel like I'm saying it astounds me. When I feel his blessing, it amazes me. I cringe, I feel sick. Oh, it's right now. I trust my faith lies rest with him. I float upon the water, I know it's him. Wretch that I am, filthy and filthy rags that I am. I leave it to him. Trust him to make the right decision, and if I make it to heaven or I don't, I pray that some of you do. And some of you are stronger than I am, better at holding and doing the things that the Christ that I was, whoever will be. One day when heaven was filled with his praises One day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin Dwelt among men, my example is he Word became flesh and the light shine among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish despite I Reject, despised and rejected Bearing our sins My Redeemer is He Hands that heal nations Stretched out on a tree And took the nails for me Living He loved me Dying He saved me one day, sh -sh -sh buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. Spiritual attack. It's because a lot of the people walking by are convicted that the message is here, by the Holy Spirit, by a light, even a, a burke like me can shine in the darkness. So what they do is they start to pray unwittingly and unknowingly against me, crack his voice, make his heart fly off, make him fail, because if he doesn't fail, if he is who he says he is, and all of it's real, then I'm in the wrong. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now he's ascended, my Lord, evermore. Death could not hold him, the 
grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. Living he loved me. Wow, wow, we get carried away on stuff like that. It's better than any drug, it's better than any feeling. This is God Almighty living in me. Praise God. Glory, hallelujah. I'm the worst of people. The worst of them. Oh, Lord. Heavenly Father, I'm going to speak, speak a word and preach a word as your waters raise, as your glory shines, as your truth unfolds day after day, week after week, year after year. Who am I? That you are mindful of me. Who am I that you sent your son to die for me? What a price you paid. What a glory. What a truth. How can you walk away from it? How can you spend another moment in your life without receiving the good news that Jesus is the Son of God? Voila. Because I harden my heart. Because I have no partial with the light. I have no part in it. Yet still, if you would change your heart, if you change your ways, if you just open your mind to the light, the goodness, the love, the justice, the mercy, the peace and the compassion that he has for you, he would change you indelibly forever. He would accept you. He would wipe away your sins your darkness, your pain, your sickness, your suffering, and wipe it clean away. As far as the east is from the west, he will place your sins away from you. That's what he's prepared to do. That's what he paid the price to do, to have that authority over mankind, that they might receive the glory of God. Hallelujah. That they might walk in relationship with him. Praises to his name. That they might be continually washed clean as wicked and undeserving as they were. What a God. What a saviour. What a price. That's why he's worthy. That's why he's the name of all names. That's why he is worthy of all praises. And there is no other way into heaven other than by acknowledging Jesus as Lord and Saviour. That's it. Repenting of your sins. Turning from your wicked ways. Oh. Praises to his name. Glory, hallelujah. We're going from the book of John. And we read last week until the point where Jesus was arrested. The Garden of Gethsemane. Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, has gone out and made a deal with the Pharisees to have Jesus tried and tested in, in all fairness to him he thinks it's in it's going to be done in the open it's going to help bring the two things together the pharisees on one side and jesus on the other but in truth it's going to bring about jesus's painful torture and death i think the other gospels speak only speak of temple guards the temple police being with uh, going into the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest Jesus. The Gospel of John differs and, and, and says, uh, I think we, we, we read the last few words from that. Uh, I'll, I'll return to uh, chapter 18, verse 1. After these words, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kedron Ravine or Kedron Brook stream. There was a garden there, and he and his disciples went into it. The place was known to Judas, his betrayer, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. This is a place outside the edge of the city is a place of olive trees and peace and quiet and tranquility which is a nice place to sit and share. Have you ever, ever done it? So 
the Judas took a detachment of soldiers and police provided by the chief priests of the Pharisees, equipped with lanterns, torches and weapons, and made his way to the garden. Jesus, knowing all that was coming upon him, went out to them and asked, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. Jesus said, I am he. And there stood Judas the traitor with them. And when he said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. These were likely battle-hardened soldiers, but certainly the Roman detachment would have been experienced men of war, tough guys. Even the temple soldiers would have seen revolts, all manner of... Uh, Difficulty and rebellious stuff to, to make them, you know, handy in a fight. These were days where carrying a sword was not just a, a, th a badge of honour, it was a, a thing of necessity. Bandits, ne'er do wells, villains, and you know, talk about one shoulder. So, an armed group of men of this type, when Jesus claims in power and authority in the name of God, he says, I am He, I am. Men, these battle-hardened men actually are physically rebutted and rebuked. And I don't know if you ever witnessed that kind of power in word. I have. You might have a, a particular schoolmaster or teacher who could literally shock in a room. I did it with them once in a corridor for the students in Saudi Arabia. Only one student was after right in the middle of maybe a hundred people, including two teachers and a head of, and a head of school. fly in the fullness of that voice and that power and authority of the story school teaching him out. And it stopped, the whole corridor froze and turned and waited and that one particular student knew who was in and he of all the student people who were in the corridor he knew sense of just how amazing that, that, that relationship is and can be, but it's very likely you just wouldn't, you wouldn't call or said this to a woman who's very close to me a few weeks ago, very for that empathy, start to understand things from my perspective, it's just, it is, just for a moment, you understand what God has done for me and why I'm so enthusiastic about my point, about my salvation, even the possibility of it. It's amazing, it's his grace, it's his power, it's who he is. It's worthy, his eyes on the sparrow, he's counting every grain of sand, the storehouses of snow, he's beheld this thing, he said. He separated the waters above from the waters below. He's mindful of you and me, he knows he are made, he's called our name, he's out of the hairs on our head. To be in that relationship, that intimacy, that love, that security. So he calls his name, speaks his name, and the guards fall back. It's also part of his foreknowledge that he's prepared to uh, save. It's like it's certain to see that he may arrest or kill everybody. 
When he said, I am me, they drew back and fell to the ground again. Jesus asked, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they required. Then Jesus said, I have told you that I am he. If I am the man you want, let these others go. This was to make good his words. I have not lost one of those who thou gave to me. Which he spoke earlier, earlier in prayer. <coughs> Thereupon Simon Peter drew, drew the sword he was wearing and struck at the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Sheathe your sword. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? Because in the other Gospels we hear the healing of this, uh, this severed ear. Again, that regrowth of a, of a body part, a limb, within the power of God and, and part of the things that we're encouraged to pray for and expect. God can do these things. He can grow back fingers and limbs and reorganize our innards and bodies. He knows our cells, so the rejection of sicknesses like leprosy and cancer that can be overturned in moments by the glory and power of God through the Holy Spirit. It's not our work that only can pray for medicines and physicians front foot place we should be continuing I believe is praying for the laying on of hands for full recovery some of the other churches that are around today say the same his power isn't diminished God hasn't gone away we're not aligned with him it's probably all the problem in alignment with him he says lay on the hands and heal the sick Strong, pulling his sword, thinking it's going to be a physical fight, even now. And Jesus saying, Sheep your sword, put it back. This is the sword that we're going to be wielding. The word, truth, not things of metal, not man made things, not against flesh and blood. This is the cup the Father has given me. This is all part of fulfilling the truth, being his rest, his thing. And if Peter goes with him, he will lose one of his disciples. And that against the prayer that was prayed. From verse 12, the troops with their commander, the Jewish police, now arrested Jesus and secured him. They took him first to Annas. Annas was father-in-law of Caiaphas. This is the middle of the night. The high priest for that year. So this is the father of the high priest. So there's a bit of surreptitious, uh, where do we, what do we do with it? Are we taking it here? Going on. St. Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it would be in their interest if one man died for the whole people. We talked about the first synagogue of Satan, the ones that would plan to kill Jesus, justify killing Jesus. Jesus was followed by Simon Peter and another disciple. Excuse me. It's an alarm on a phone. Beat. Followed by Simon Peter, another disciple, likely, likely John, the one they sometimes say, yeah, the disciple Jesus loved. This disciple, who was acquainted with the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter halted at the door outside. So the other disciple, the high priest's acquaintance, went out again and spoke to the woman at the door and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Are you another of this man's disciples? I am not, he said. The servants and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and were standing around it warming themselves. And Peter too was standing with them sharing the warmth. Now, I don't believe it's part of the design of this gospel. I don't think it's something that's been organised and thought about. But we're seeing a, a, a duality. We're seeing Judas and Simon Peter on opposing sides of betrayal. They're both betraying Jesus. This is going to be mirrored. Jesus' death, his crucifixion, when there'll be two thieves outside. It's a theme, but I don't think it's an intent. I don't think it's written in intent. It would be so hard to write at this sort of level. The greatest authors and thinkers of our day now might be able to do it. The, the peaks of Chinese society when they wrote into textuality and the tales of Sun the Monkey. We're talking at that same level, but 
even further because it's duality within duality, following duality. It's incredible. And this is the, the, the heart of the gospel. This is the message that our Saviour is coming to. And Peter too was standing with them, sharing the warmth. Yeah, we like the good thing. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about what he taught. Jesus replied, I have spoken openly to all the world. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews congregate. I have said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask my hearers what I told them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the police who was standing next to him struck him on the face, exclaiming, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If I spoke amiss, state it in evidence. If I spoke well, why strike me? Jesus is starting, not a mockery, not a sarcasm, but he's clearly showing they are not following court procedure. They're not making a fair trial. They're starting with words and lies. They're starting with accusations about questioning about who he is and what he's done without the right authority, without the right setting, without advocacy, without all the things that should be there. It's likely not all the Sanhedrin have been called at this point. Only a certain group of people, and they're the ones that are steering to go against Jesus. soldiers, interestingly, in the temple guards that probably had more experience of Jesus preaching than the uh, high the priests. Ask my hearers what I told them. They know what I said. When he did this, one of the police who was standing next to him struck him on the face. And again, these people didn't. You know, this isn't just a, a mild panty rebuke. This is likely a closed fist punch in the face. A man who's in chains. Is that the way to answer the high priest? If I spoke amiss, said Jesus, state the evidence. Yes, if I spoke well, why strike me? So Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Annas, father, realising the elders often, realising first the truth of what Jesus said, and something we haven't talked about yet, but the rejection of the, of the uh, betrayed woman, the, the, the uh, adulteress, something similar that happened. Old people are first to lay down their stones. Why? Because they know the truth. They've got that long-term experience to go, he's got us there. And exactly in this bit, Annas realises that there's no way he's going to be able to carry this through to the morning. You're over with myself. So he takes him in front of the high boots and down. Meanwhile, Simon Peter stood warming himself. The others asked, are you another of his disciples? But he denied it. I am not, he said. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter cut off, insisted, did I not see you with him in the garden? Peter denied again, and just then, a cock crowed. This is the full fulfilment of when Jesus and, and Peter was together, and Peter was like, I'd die for you, Lord. I'm the one, I'm number one, I would die for you. And Jesus said, look, within the next, by morning, you'll have denied me three times before the cock crowed. Here, that fulfilment, what a, what a moment that was uh, depicted in plays or movies. You know, that's the, the bit when we know we've got it wrong. I, I don't know about you, I've been through the times like that, whether it's big or small, it never feels It's always a, oh my God, no. the most truest senses of it. Uh, I'm caught, I'm done. Fulfilled. I'm, I'm not complete. I'm, I'm not who I say I am. I'm a liar, I'm a thief, I'm a robber, I'm a deceiver, I'm a child of Satan. That's, that's it. When Caiaphas Jesus was led into the governor's headquarters. Seems to just passes him on again to, to there we go. He was now early morning of all the preaching on the book of John. This is one that I've looked forward to perhaps the most. I'm just getting my bake silhouette because uh, it contains a quote 
Ian, albeit a, a school level Latin scholar, there's a quote in Latin that I understand and it, it resonates with me again. There's no favourite part of the Bible. It's inspired God's word, there's no favouritism, is it? We should be as happy in the genealogies or the tales of, of, of destruction and woe as we are in the, in the rejoicing of Jesus' rising and birth. And so, I think, though, in our lives there are portions that speak to us, that resonate with us, because they know our, God knows our character and our parts of the Bible, just like Jesus knows that he's the head of the body of the church. It's, it's just parts that are specific to us. It's, a, it's an intimate relationship. And, and being such, God, who is God, knows us intimately to a point that is deeper and further than any other relationship we can possibly have. No matter how close you are to your wife, son, your daughter, your parents, you don't. You're never going to have that on this level of understanding that God has for us until that time when we've raised in the cloud together. Then we will, according to 1 Corinthians 13, then we will know as we are fully known. God fully knows. Him. He knows our wretchedness. He knows our despicableness. He knows our cruelty, our candor. He knows our our, our, our simple joys and passion. He knows our desires. He's capable of discerning them, separating them out. And from that perfect knowledge, he knows our heart. He knows us totally enough to judge us completely and fairly. Right. Mission. So, Parts of the Bible to speak to or resonate with more, you know, more relevantly than others at certain times. Like I certainly I just I spoke uh, about a few moments ago about the story of the ten lepers and how that resonates with me for this particular part of the journey. And there are times when it's sometimes it's just a, for a time, but there are ones that resonate through. And I, I've shared about words that God spoke to me, and I believe those words become part of our. Central Reservation, but I think that's part of my, my life direction, my life journey, my life truth. And God has spoken, and God, who is God, is right all the time. And if that was true when I was drifting into the Central Reservation, it's true right now as the waves pile up again. Decide. Don't turn the wheel, don't change, don't stray, don't go to the right, don't go to the left. Stay on a straight course. He will lift us up, humble ourselves before the Lord, and He will lift us up. It's His spirit, it's His job, it's His joy. If we commit ourselves to staying on that narrow path, He will move through us. That's the glory of heaven. The words mid veritas. When Caiaphas, Jesus led into the governor's headquarters. It was now early morning. The Jews themselves stayed outside the headquarters to avoid defilement so they could eat the Passover meal. This uh, festival that was going on, it's a week long festival, and uh, the Passover meal is important to stay pure. Uh, we'll see more about that later. So, Pilate could put uh, touching foreigners, people who have touched things who are defiled. You defile yourself and then you have to purify yourself for a time, for seven days, so that you'd miss the festival. So they stayed outside and let Pilate talk to him. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, We should not have brought him before you. We start to get an insight. If you ever uh, mix or deal with Jewish communities, this isn't a slight against them. This is about their personality as a nation. And you'll see in this that the, the, the curious deflection. 
not that they always do that, I mean, just in this case we see that style of avoiding the question or, or answering it in a different way. And Jesus himself does this stuff very well too. If you were not a criminal, they replied, we should not have brought him before you. Pilate said, take him away and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, we are not allowed to put any man to death. Thus they ensured the fulfilment of the words by which Jesus indicated the manner of his death and said he would be lifted up. Every, every penalty in Jewish law, the serious one for death, is going to be stoning. Certainly for blasphemy, stoning. And we, we know that the Jew is not something that, that, that is unfamiliar to the Jews at this time. They've picked up stones to stone on a number of occasions. We know that in the short uh, few weeks, Stephen, the first martyr, will be martyred by being stoned to death publicly for proclaiming the gospel and for proclaiming Jesus as Lord, as, a, as, as the Messiah, as the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And for that, he's going to be stoned to death. So it's not something they don't do. But here, they're trying to get round having to do it because to stone an innocent man would be on their head. So they're trying, they're, 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 as servants of the devil, they're trying to every way to writhe and twist out of the responsibility of his death. They want him dead, but they want somebody else to kill him. And the easiest person is the man. Gentile. We are not allowed to put any man for death, so this will be part of the agreement uh, law, even though they do it whenever they're incensed. They, they're here, they're, they're saying, well, actually, under your law, we can't kill anybody. Thus they ensured the fulfilment of the words which Jesus indicated man of his death, because the Roman uh, method of uh, uh, punishment in this, this way is death by crucifixion. Pilate went back into his headquarters and summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked. Jesus said, is that not your own idea or what others have suggested to you? What? Am I a Jew? said Pilate. Your own nation and their chief priests have brought you before me. What have you done? Jesus replied, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If it did, my followers would be fighting to save me from arrest by the Jews. My kingly authority comes from elsewhere. So again, Jesus is doing the same thing here, but so much more masterfully. He's saying, I'm not a threat to the kingdom of Rome per se, because the kingdom that I represent is the kingdom of heaven. By that, every nation will one day fall. He's not saying that. He's here at this moment to fulfill the prophecy that uh, the Jews will reject him. The kingdom and the people of the Jewish nation will turn their back on the, the uh, parable of the, the, the landowner who gives the stewards the land to work as he goes away. And when he comes back, he sends his servants, the prophet, which is the prophet, to to say, give the land back, and they're like, no, well, let's kill the prophets, and then have to kill the servants, and then we won't have to give the land back. And eventually he sends his son, thinking they won't kill his son, but they do. And this is the uh, parable that Jesus told about this time. Here the Jewish nation is rejecting Jesus. They're ensuring his death by crucifixion. Unwittingly, the devil is playing into God's hand. The devil about to lose completely the game that he thinks he's winning. The land will be mine. There's nothing he can do about it. Ooh, danger will run. Am I a Jew? Your own nation and their chief priests have brought you before me. What have you done? Jesus replied, my kingdom does not belong to this world, so he's not offending Roman law. If it did, my followers would be fighting to save me from arrest by the Jews. My kingly authority comes from elsewhere. So he's, he's also saying, look, we're not even fighting. If my disciples were not use of what they say that I am, we would have a Barney going on. There'd be trouble everywhere, but they're not. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, the king is your word. My task is to bear witness to the truth, which is the kingly duty that the Jews didn't understand. For this I was born, for this I came into the world, and all who are not deaf to truth listen to my voice. Pilate said, God is true. It's very Oops,
upset to me in some way. But I'm sure in the day that it's coming, it'll make it all right, it'll make me understand. The pilot didn't wait for the answer. If he had, Jesus would have been in That's what he is. Instead, with those words, he went out again to the Jews. Wait for the answer. What is true? That's what Jesus encourages us to do. It's what I'm asking you to do. To receive Him. To the fullness of what He offers. To ask Him. To ask that question. What's the truth? Who are you? Where are you? Are you real? Give him the opportunity to answer that, as he says quite clearly, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and to whoever should hear my voice and open the door, and to him I will sit with him, go into him, and sit with him and suffer with him, and come into your life. He will reveal himself if he ask him truthfully and honestly in that way that reflects the wretchedness of your condition. For my part, he said, I can find no grace against him. But you have a custom that I release one prisoner for you and Passover. Would you like me to re release the king of the Jews? Again, the clamour rose. Not him. We want Barabbas. Barabbas was a man. A duality repeat. And this is the simple nature of the cross. The simple thing that I was talking about at the beginning. The choice that we're all given. We follow Jesus. Receive the things of the kingdom, or we don't. We save our lives, or we don't. Everybody is given that opportunity. Every man, woman, and child who has lived since the time of Jesus has that opportunity before them. That's the gospel, that's the truth. And if we choose not to, then He gives us the right to go our own way, to pursue the things of the world, to bow down to other things. Other spirits, I, as, a, as a witness, I can only say to you, Whoa! Think on! Think of your lives, think of your directions, think of your hopes, your dreams, think of your ideals, think of your estate, and consider a life of more, of greater, of higher, faster. More marvellous. We all have the opportunity while there's breath in our bodies to receive Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. It's not a trick. It's not a magic show. It's not a gimmick. It's the simple truth of the Gospel. The simple truth available to all of us. Will you believe? I believe. Will you reject? Will you live? Or will you die? Amen. Have a good day, sir. Praise the Lord. I can't with all these people dying. It's hard. But at the time of His coming, at the time of His knowing, God will explain to me why all those people were past, why they reject this Lord. Why do they go their own way and not follow or open their hearts to the truth? Jesus died for each of them. And he'd do it again. Is that what you like? <coughs> I don't want to move too quickly through this bit of prayer that I shared in the last couple of sermons. I was anxious at a time to end this story, that long job. I understand again from the students in the workshops chipping away at the original point, which I just won't finish. We have to rush through and make mistakes. Yeah, a craftsman, uh, an artist, a master, learns to step back, go at it, say, enthusiasm as they did at the beginning. That craftsman stuff. Our Father in heaven, there is no like of him. 
him in terms and says don't call anyone, anyone else teacher. You could say don't call anybody else artist or craftsman or maker. It doesn't wash. And he's uh, unfolding everything according to his will and sometimes going, oh why is this all of If there was any other way to do it most excellently in the most excellent way, he would do it. Instead, he's going to stay with that line, stay with that path, stay with that truth, stay with that gift, stay with that line. He's going to continue working through his spirit, saving lives one at a time, day after day, year after year, until the point is reached where his church is born and an understanding is reached that the stewards of this world, we are ready to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour for him to come there. And those brackish waters, those areas that so few and far between that their clamour will not matter, will not change, will not shame, will not sound, will not note out the joy ringing out as Jesus That's the vision that he gives for his children, his children. If I've been talking about it before, it's the vision we see in Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the man, it's the vision that we have. God is unfolding his will in this world because he has the authority over this world because he died and rose again to save this world. And in his death, he wrested that authority away. And he said, well, why don't you come now? I've called, I cry out for her. Come now. Again, it's not about my estate. I'll go into the flame. I'm, I'm, I'm really disparate about who I am and about everything else. I love you, Lord. You know, I'd rather you come than, than not come. If it doesn't, I'm not going to hold it against him. I love him. I trust him. I've been trusting him. I've been faith in him. Leaning back and, and being buoyed up by him. So many times I've put my foot down. I understand now what I mean. working out in the best way possible. So much so that everyone who sees that, which is everyone, everyone who witnesses that is, is unfolding, his revelation, everyone who stands and testifies to it will worship him forever. The enthusiasm should be like a like a mighty sea, an ocean crashing repeatedly over the mountains and every obstacle until there's no obstacles at all. All it is is a glorious joy and splendor. Hallelujah! Praises to his name! Glory, hallelujah! The King is risen! Yes! That's the kingdom of heaven. And until that's in our lives, manifest in our walks and ways, I just don't know what to do. Oh yeah, keep going, keep doing, keep believing, keep hoping. That's what my prayer is for you. Whatever situation you're in, if these volcanoes have gone off, if the nuclear bombs have dropped, if the, you know, a, a meteorite was smashed into the earth, whatever it is, if this message is still being played, is still being heard, be encouraged, be not anxious and afraid. The Lord, who is the Lord, will see it through according to his purpose, and it will be the most amazing thing ever, because that's who he is. May you be lifted up. Be encouraged. Um, and you're raising days go well in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you ever seen this movie? Well, no. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, 
What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in order of you be still, will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes, when I find myself, amen, standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Sorry, dogs. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in order of you be still, will I stand in your presence? And to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, yeah, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel, will I dance for you Jesus? Or in order of you be still, will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine, but what an imagination, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, what's your imagination doing, I can only imagine, when all I will do, is forever, forever worship you, can only imagine. I can only imagine. If you want to find out more, then uh, there's more preaching on carpetcruxes.net. Find yourself a Bible, it's all in there. Ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord into your life if you haven't done so already. Say those words, those prayers, not the sinner's prayer on the internet. If you want to be baptised, I'm here at PR most uh, days, and uh, mainly most of Sabbaths, for the time for the foreseeable future, if not, I'll post something on the uh, website, I'll try and update that too. There's a daily act of worship in uh, 211.org, I highly recommend it, it's a simple thing, two worship songs, one Bible passage, one prayer, but if you're not doing that already, do it. You can't find a devotion like Word for the Day or Morning Spurgeon to Morning and Evening. Just get into a scripture, just get into a, a routine of it. Because it's God's work, not yours. You're allowing the master, the maker of all creation, to get in there and get his tool set out. Make the changes necessary. Build the voice. I got punched in the throat by a Polish lock forward a long time ago. And that took my voice from one level to the next. But it's been through giving up smoking the right amount of drinking, all manner of other things, and, uh, and praying humbly not to do a disservice to the Holy Spirit, to God Almighty, but it resonates, I know it is. Any good thing you see in me is Jesus. I can not imagine what, what truth is, what our blessing is, what it's going to be like. What the Bible says is more than you can. Bless you in your day and way, and uh, may you keep in your week to come. Your Sabbath closes.
mine is. And, uh, I think I'm going to dump some shields and go for some. Well, if you need prayer or you need to questions, there are opportunities to speak on the website. I will answer. Not a single message. Not a single question. But hey, oh no, something's going to be asking me to buy finance things. But hey, that's what it's there for. Don't be a stranger. May the Lord lift you and guide you and keep you and cause you to laugh like sheep. Amen. Hope. Yeah. Oh.